Hi friends. I have been hunting for the perfect vintage fringe leather jacket for a really long time and I finally found it. I was also able to learn the story behind the jacket and a little bit more about the previous owner. This is one of the things I love the most about the vintage community. In this video, I'll tell you a little bit more about this great piece that is now a treasured part of my wardrobe. If you're already a subscriber, thank you and I love you. If you haven't subscribed, please do and tap the bell for notifications. I've wanted a nice vintage fringe leather jacket from the 1970s for a long time, probably since the 1970s. A suede one in kind of a Western style in a pretty orangey color. I thought they were so cool when I was a teenager in the 70s, but you know, I never got one myself. Now in my 60s, I wasn't sure how much I would wear one of these. So I ended up buying a resale one first just to check it out and see if it worked with my wardrobe. My resale one was also cool. I got it at a place that benefits animal shelters. To my surprise, I wore it a lot. I knew I would wear it even more if it was a vintage one and it didn't have all of the beading. It would just go with a lot more things. I started my quest for the perfect one. I like my vintage pieces to be in really great condition, as pristine as possible. Now, there are a lot of these vintage suede leather jackets from the 1970s out there, but they're usually not in the greatest condition. They have tears or some of the fringes missing. They just don't look great. And I know that that's also cool looking, but it's just not me. I exhausted my local vintage shops and everybody that I follow on Instagram and didn't find anything. So I decided to go on Etsy. Now I have had a lot of luck finding things on Etsy. Recently for Christmas, we found the perfect leather jacket for our son Dane there. And it's a place that I really love. I have learned that you really do need to take your time, look at the description, read everything carefully, double check measurements, and make sure and ask as many questions as possible, just so that you are comfortable and know you're getting something that will fit and it's in the condition that you want it to be. When I started looking for mine on Etsy, I was really surprised to see that there were lots of options. I did need to rule out quite a few of them due to size and condition. I went back several times and finally landed on one from a seller called Blue Skies and Moon Pies. The title was 1970s Southwestern Women's Ms. Pioneer Genuine Leather Fringe Jacket. In the pictures, the jacket looked like it was in amazing condition. Also, as I kept double checking the measurements, it definitely seemed like it was my size too. Then I started asking the seller, whose name is Jessie, a few questions I had. What is the measurement of the waist? Is the jacket stiff? or a little bit hard? Is there any kind of a smell on the jacket from cigarettes or must or mold? She got back to me right away and answered all of my questions. She also let me know that the jacket had been her mother's and had always been kept in closets in non-smoking houses. She also said this, I've battled selling this jacket for so long. I have absolutely loved it since I was a kid. Trust me, I'd never let it go if it fit me. Sold. I could tell this was the pristine jacket I had been waiting for for about 50 years. In the meantime, I sold my other jacket so someone else can enjoy it. The jacket arrived super quickly and was just gorgeous. The sleeves were a little short, but nothing my trusty alterations guru Donna couldn't fix. I've had a chance to wear it out several times now and have gotten so many compliments on it. I really love being able to wear it with my custom embroidered vintage Levi's 501s for a complete nod to the 70s, my favorite fashion era. I reached out to Jessie to thank her again and see if she would maybe share a little bit more about the jacket, which was her mom's, whose name is Patsy. Here's what I learned. Mom is a born and raised South Carolina beauty and always had an act for style. I remember watching her get ready when I was young and thinking I wanted to be just like her, classy, always a lady, never leaving the house without at least a little lipstick and blush, just like her mom was, and strong. She had a collection of the prettiest dresses, wore ties and pants like Annie Hall, 
fur coats, hats, and more suits than most businessmen had. All so fun, bright red pinstripe, linen. She always had too many clothes. It's definitely a genetic disorder as I have the same problem. I hear you, Jesse and Patsy. Before they married, my dad had taken her on a trip out west in 1977, where they went many places in Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. She was eyeing the most beautiful fringe leather jacket while shopping in a little boutique in Santa Fe. And as she browsed more elsewhere, dad sneakily went back in and bought it for her and surprised her with it later that evening. She absolutely loved it. They married in 1979 and I wasn't born until 1984. I can close my eyes and remember exactly where she kept this jacket in her closet, always protected. She'd let me play dress up with her clothes as long as I didn't get into her makeup at the same time. She'd wear that jacket at big Clemson Tiger football games in the fall and winter, and people always wanted to get a picture with her because they thought she was a singer or something. Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of her wearing it, but all I know is it's had its fair share of travels and experiences. My mom was my first style icon, and I get more like her every day. The most positive person I've ever known, just pure sweetness. I couldn't think of a person who'd have anything bad to say about her. She's been a fitness instructor and personal trainer for over 30 years. She's made a huge impact in countless people's lives. If I'm half the woman she is, I'll be doing just fine. I mean, how incredibly cool is all of that? I am so grateful that I know this story and I will definitely be channeling this amazing woman every time I wear the jacket. It just makes the jacket so much more special. These stories about previous owners are one of the things I love so much about wearing vintage clothes. I very rarely get to know the story and I usually just kind of make it up myself. Thank you, Jesse and Patsy, for letting me give this jacket a new life while honoring its previous one. Check out Jesse's site, Blue Skies and Moon Pies. She was an absolute pleasure to work with. Highly recommend. I will put her information in the description below. Also, my cousin Mitchie makes the most beautiful scarves. She sent me a bunch of them and I really love them. More to come on that. What do you think of the jacket and the story? I would love to know in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Until next time, have fun and dress it up a little.